Previously on Hotel Hell, I found out the upscale Juniper Hill Inn in Windsor, Vermont, is bleeding money. So you're losing over $200,000 a year? We're in trouble. And it's because the owners have spent a fortune to make this place look like an art museum. I've always thought that you should live with nice things if you can afford them. Treating it like their own private country club. <laughs> I quickly realised the rooms were vacant because Robert and Ari have alienated themselves from the town. And the inn's appearance is completely deceiving. What is that smell? It smells like shit. It's like someone's shot under the bed. And instead of working with their employees... Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. Else. Excuse me. Excuse me. I am the boss. This place is fucked. They're oppressing them like indentured servants. I'm barely surviving, financially and emotionally. I'd be very careful about coming down on me too hard. And communication is almost non-existent. Unless you fucking ask, how are you supposed to fucking know? Well, I have been asking. I said, where does this chicken go? So ask him again! And what's worse, I was completely shocked to learn that the staff never get paid on time. Like pulling teeth to get my paycheck. You don't get paid? It takes forever to get my paycheck, and when I do, it's usually something's left out. And when I confronted Robert and Ari in front of everyone, all I got was excuses. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? They don't have to work here. How dare you? Go on, then, you pompous fuck. Don't talk to me like that. You still haven't got it that this place is sinking. So far, my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn has been shocking. Yeah, but it smells like shit. And the root of the problem is beginning to show. You don't get paid? I've seen with my own eyes how poorly this place is run. But now I need to see what happens to the bottom line. <laughs> when Robert and Ari use Juniper Hill as their own private playground, entertaining all their friends. I'm hoping estate manager Ryan can help me. A lot of the staff are telling me their um, friends pop up from Manhattan and come and spend weekends and sit, drink, and be merry. Are these guys actually paying? Uh, no. Robert had a slew of friends come and stay for free and eat for free for weeks at a time, and that's why they've been losing money since I've been here. What do the colors mean? Help me understand that. Green means they're paid in full. Red means they have not paid. Oh my god. I have 50 room nights. That's between November and December. Well, just two average, months. they're $200 a night. But that's. It's like $10,000 in revenue. That's $10,000. They're running it in almost a like a clubhouse, almost like they're trying to buy friends. And Robert prides himself as the superior business person. Robert walks around like he's the king, and that everybody hears a bunch of hicks. This is insane. I mean, this is like a private club for him. He's worked with the servers before and accepted a portion of the tips. Oh, my god. Fucking hell. He's taking their bloody tips. And this guy is mad. I can't believe this. He doesn't pay them, and then he takes their tips. I've got to talk to him. How are we? Barbara, Hello, how are you today? Good. I just out of interest, is it true that Robert takes a percentage of the tips? Yes. He does? Yeah. And what percentage of tips does he take? What we get. He gets the same as you? Yeah. It's Otherwise. really hard to keep track of the tips. I it, the, the bookkeeping it yeah, doesn't. It, it seems inconsistent. But why is he touching the tips? He because did the same thing for New Year's. They felt that because they needed to cover part of the band, that they took the tips off. A of uh, tip. That's why we don't make anything here. An owner has no right to take the staff's tips, and with all the room and food comps Robert is giving his friends, it's no wonder the inn is struggling. The staff shouldn't be subsidising the inn so Robert and his friends get to live the high life for free. It's sickening. I have to confront him and figure out this nonsense. I just had a look round and I just... I, I am flabbergasted. I'm going to be really frank and I'm going to try to stay so calm. But if I smell BS that you start going into denial, I'm going to let rip again. I studied your reservations. Last November, December, 49 rooms were given out for free. And on top of that, they ate, they drank. For nothing. I'm not even tipping. And I'm just, the fuck are you doing? Tell me why. I thought I needed to have somebody here. Rather than having two other guests in the hotel all by themselves, to have more energy. 
No, You're I'm... making it worse. Not only do your friends not leave tips, but when people do tip the staff, you take a share. On nights that I work, I did take tips. That is disgusting. Why do you think you got a right to that? I have tried to work with my staff to teach them that this is the way I want service done. You're so bad. I take a percentage of the tips based on the amount of work that I do. Yeah. And who does the books on those tips? Uh, Ari. <laughs> but if I'm doing their job and I can't get it across to them... You're the owner. You're not the head bus boy. You're not the barman. You're the fucking owner. What I was saying wasn't getting through. So the psychology was that if I started to take tips, they would maybe pay attention to that. That is insane. It's the worst management model I've ever heard in my entire life. Do you honestly need a 70-year-old lady's tips? No. So 15, 20 grand's worth of complimentary rooms in food in a two-month period. I'm just, well, it doesn't I, make sense. I have to tell you that the reason Please. I did that was because I thought that they would at least tip my staff. But they didn't tip your staff. Sorry to piss on your bonfire. Well, then I will call my friends and I will tell them, look, what happened? You haven't got the fucking balls to call your friends and ask them to leave a tip. Yes, I do. Call them, then. and ask them, I thought at least, out of generosity, you would have left a couple of hundred dollars tip for the team. Hello? Dana? Yeah? It's Robert. You stayed here recently, and um, I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. Did you leave a well, tip? I left money with you. Uh, no, 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 okay. but you said you were going to send additional tip. You mean? I think my time's done here. That was one of the things that I was hoping you had done. I left the no, money no, no. with you. Well, wait a minute. There's others to call, too. Gordon. Oh, dear. Gordon has left. He thinks I'm stealing my staff's tips. Unbelievable. Joke. Hey, Ray, it's Robert. Did you tip the staff? Because they're telling people that they haven't been tipped. I left the money with you. Oh, so I need to do that. I, I have somehow lost that. Fucking idiot. Gordon left, thinking I'm a liar. I feel as if I'm, I'm at the end of my rope. I mean, I'm gonna lose everything. I'm gonna have to start all over again if this doesn't work, and I just don't seem that I can, can do it anymore. <laughs> no, I can't do it. just left Juniper Hill after catching Robert in a lie about his staff getting tips. I was under the impression that you and Greg left a tip. It, did you leave a tip? Well, I left the money with you. The guy is maddening, and I don't know if I've got it in me to help fix the place. I'm so pissed off with Robert right now. Honestly, I cannot stand any more of his bloody lies. This guy doesn't deserve the team that is in his hotel. He treats everyone so badly. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu... He doesn't even pay them properly. I had to wait five weeks before I got a paycheck. I work very long days yeah. and I haven't been paid in three weeks. How can someone so rich not pay the people he employs? That's something I simply won't stand for. As angry as I am, I feel I have to help the staff get paid. And I have an idea of just how to do it. I'm going to hire a team of white club movers to assemble all of Robert's most valuable antiques from the storage units, the basement, and around the inn. I'm hoping when confronted with all the money he's wasted, I can convince Robert to sell some of his vast collection to pay his staff. If this is going to work, I must stay calm while I talk to Robert. Um, I've come back. Not for you, but for the staff. They deserve better. We're losing, on average, fifteen to $20,000 a month. And we are short. But you have a serious hobby of sort of an art collector, an art dealer. I mean, you could open a museum. How many pieces do you have in there? Oh, my god. Hundreds. What are we talking about? Everything collectively. All those beautiful oil paintings, the expensive stuff. At a suitable auction, um, maybe $300,000. $300,000. And that would supplement you for the next 12 months, 18 months? Yes, that would certainly get us through. That would get us through two years. Um, right. There's something I want you to see. Yeah. Okay. I'd like you to come with me, please. If there's one thing we need right now, 
is an injection of funds. Wow. Robert, no man alive needs this much stuff. Walking in, it was shocking. Now, antiques, oil paintings, silverware. Does it not, I mean, frustrate you that we're sat with all this, and yet we can't pay our staff properly? There's someone I'd like you to meet. She's the head auctioneer at Bonhams in Boston. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Gordon. Uh, nice to see you. Gordon, great to see you. Likewise, thank you so much for coming. Um, we're in the shit, basically, and this stuff needs to go. We need to raise as much money as possible. So what's the best price we can get for all this stuff? What you have here doesn't read as a collection to me. It's kind of an accumulation. A lot of copies of things, or if they are right. of the period that they're supposed to be, there's some condition issues. Um, I would say about 25,000. Say that again? 25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. Amy's opinion on our, our things was shocking. And I can't really believe that. And the painting? The painting is a copy. And not a good one, I'm afraid. How much is that worth? I can't imagine what someone would pay for it. It's, it's really very low value. Wow. Robert, I thought you said it was expensive, 18th century. Well, it's dated. I dated 17th century. It is, but it's not actually of that period at all. I'm sorry. Did you know that was a copy? I did not know that that was a copy. Lots of copies. Reproductions. Reproductions. We were hoping in the ballpark of three to 400,000. 25 grand for everything. Yeah. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. Even all this amazing silverware. I put $100 on everything on this table. $100? What about this? First period, this is Sheffield. Yeah, it's plate. What about this? 175 bucks. Th those are Baccarat candlesticks? They just don't bring very much at auction, I'm afraid. Uh, is this the kind of collection that you'd be willing to sell at Bonhams? Would you take the whole lot? No, we wouldn't. Wow. We would okay. have to say no. We're floating as if we've got this asset full of three or $400,000 worth of antiques. We haven't, and we're distracted with the bits of crap in here. It was a wake-up call. Thank you, that's sure. the start. My pleasure. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thank you. It means that we don't have the backup that we thought we had. We've paid more money for fucking storage than they're worth. Than they're worth. Does that not bring it home a little bit earlier that you need to be an innkeeper, not a part-time antiques dealer? Because you fooled me. You gave me the tour and I thought, wow, this guy is, uh, he's got serious cash to burn. But right now, we're even further in the shit than I thought we were. So the pressure intensifies. You need to focus on fixing the business because that's what's going to generate sufficient funds to keep this place open. And I don't think you quite realize that your staff, they're miserable. They don't like Ari's barking. Excuse me. Bragging about Excuse me. One... I am the boss. You bitching. When you're in your fucking kitchen all day long and you're on the goddamn internet instead of actually trying to perfect a menu. It's not a nice atmosphere for the staff currently. And if they quit, you're fucked. They are staff. They're not pigs that live in the fucking basement. If you think that's not the case, and you're that delusional, and you're not prepared to listen to anything I'm saying, you're fucked. Sell the inn, sell this shit in here, and give up. I've just come back to try and save Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought I could use some of the owner's vast array of antiques to get the cash flowing. But I've just discovered... I would say about $25,000. $25,000. All this? All this. That I was wrong. That won't even get us through the next five weeks. With no assets, the challenge to make this place work is bigger than ever. Tomorrow, I have to start the process of change. Before I get stuck in, there's one thing I want to try. Oh, God. It's bloody roasting. Oh, fuck, my feet are freezing now.
Molly, now it's time to see if I can get through to Robert and Ari. Can I just borrow you for two minutes? I want to show you something. Yes, yeah, both of you together. I'd like you to come up to my uh, room. Thank you. If this place is going to work as a business, Robert and Ari need to hear some home truths oh. about how their paying customers really feel about their precious inn. Um, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you so much for uh, popping into my room. <laughs> how was your stay last night? Well, we didn't know where to go when we walked in, so we walked around and around until we found somebody to help us check in. I was slightly disorientated when I checked in as well. I mean, there's no signs in terms of reception, no. front no. desk, or bar, no. lounge, or... And how were the rooms? I had a space heaters to heat the room up. Oh, really? Yeah, three of them. When I checked the room, it was like a sauna. He sounds aggravated. Raise your hands if you'd come back, please. No, not like it is. Not like it is. There's someone I'd like to hear from who hasn't said anything yet. He is a lead inspector of the diamond collection of hotel and inns across America. In a nutshell, very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, no check-in area, I was totally lost. And the bar's a joke. Should not even be there, folks. It looks as if it's set up for a wedding. The hospitality is nice, but everything else fails. How do you feel? I don't want my guests to have that experience. You know, our goal is to please people. That's why we're in the in-business. And we've obviously fallen really short. Um, For me, I think that's positive feedback, so I'm grateful entirely. Let me tell you, thank you all. Can I uh, keep you two here, please? Yes. Thank you. The guest feedback please. has certainly been constructive. Thank you. Thank you. And Robert's Thank even you. using a word I've never heard from him before. We are sorry. But I'm shocked by Ari's response to the guest complaints. What's the matter with you? Why are you so angry with guests? Why are you running an inn when you're so bitter? You look like you don't give a shit. I'm not saying that I don't like the guests, but uh, if you have ever been an innkeeper, it's 24-7. No one is more touched by what these people said. Well, Ari is I mean, clearly, but... Uh... I would love this to be our, our private home. But I am. It's a lost cause. And Ari does have a different way of dealing sure. with I things. see that. Based on my experience, I would seriously request both of you actually sit down and reconsider whether you should be in this business going forward. It's clear to me that Ari isn't cut out for the hospitality business. And even though Robert now understands how he's let down his guests, he needs to understand that he's also let down his staff and failed to recognize their potential. I've got a plan that will help Robert to see what he's doing wrong and how he can fix things in his kitchen. I've asked Chef Julian to cook three dishes from Robert's expensive old menu and three new dishes of his very own creation. Once he's finished, we're going to pretend I cook the new ones and see what Robert says. Crucially, Julian's dishes are all ones that could be served on a $29 menu, half what Robert currently charges. Look at that. $74, $29. Let's go. Good luck. OK? Yes. I can't wait to see what Robert thinks of Julian's affordable food when he thinks I've cooked it. I asked him to cook a three-course meal. Yeah, he cooked his lamb, his crab cake, and the dessert. That's the $74 version. I cooked the other meal. I got hold of some chicken, some sprouts, and I used the crab and a butterscotch pudding with some caramelized popcorn. $29, that's what those three courses are going to cost. Yeah. Okay. Julian's three new dishes are fantastic and fairly priced. That would go a long way towards bringing guests back through the front door. Now that Robert thinks I've cooked them, I bet he loves them. Talk to me. Excellent. Fabulous. And the um, Brussels sprouts are really good, too. Mm -hmm. You've actually leafed them, and mm -hmm. it's very pretty. Mm -hmm. well, this is a much better value. I've never heard you use that word value. And we could get two for the price of one. That's what we should do. So my menu or Julian's menu? Your menu. My menu. Now, I'm flattered, but there's something I need to tell you. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I felt at that very moment that I had done Julian a disservice. Robert, have you got something you'd like to say to your chef, Julian? I'm sorry that I haven't given you the freedom to do what you need to do. I guess I have to eat it and say that I have restricted him from being who he can be, which is, is really difficult. And um, I have to say that this is delicious. Coming up... He's emotionally constipated. Robert has a major decision about his future with Ari. I think he gave up. Now that owner Robert's heard from the guests... Very disappointed. 
didn't meet expectations. And sampled the kind of affordable, high-quality food his chef can cook when given the chance. Excellent. Fabulous. I didn't make any of this. Julian cooked everything. I hope this is all starting to sink in with him. Well, how are you feeling? I'm feeling all sorts of things. I mean, there's, of course, fear. But surely hope, too. Your chef's food was amazing. Absolutely. It was an epiphany. I feel regretful that I have come across in the way I have and that I haven't exhibited to my staff the leadership they needed and the compassion that apparently I'm, I must be void of. I think for you to tell them how you're feeling, what you're going to commit to, how important they are for you. I know that this place wouldn't be here without them. And I'm wanting to do everything I can to show them that we can make this work. I'm glad Robert's on a new path. I just hope it's not too late for his staff to learn to trust him again. You are all valuable to me and to Ari and to Juniper Hill. And I fear that we have not always express that and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Sorry for your paychecks being late. Sorry for taking part of the tips. Sorry for not communicating because that was the reality and one that I'm not proud of, that we're not proud of, but one that we certainly can correct and that's what we want to do. The business is short of cash flow. I thought there was a substantial collection of three to four hundred thousand dollars worth of assets. I mean, why don't you explain exactly? In the things that were assembled here, um, they said, lucky if we got 25,000. We are on our ass. It is going to be difficult. And I think Robert has realized the bubble's burst. And he understands the truth to where we are. I think there's a perception that we are these wealthy magnets coming in and Lord of the Manor sort of things. That's not who we are. You know, I knew there were some um, bad situations here, but I stayed because I want to be here and I want to help him. And uh, I believe what he says. And I'm very proud of you, Robert. You're the man that I've always known and loved. It's, he's coming back. I'm glad to see that, you know, we're facing facts and uh, that's the only way we're going to get out of this. Agreed. Thank you. Ryan, what do you think of what Rob just said? I wanted to stand up and clap. I did too. <laughs> I feel like I'm working for somebody who can actually run a business when I hear things like that that can succeed. I've never seen Robert so serious. This is actually really a life-changing thing for him. And I feel like I want to be part of the changes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank the you, truth's boy. important. It's humbling to have to admit some of the things that haven't gone right. But at the same time, it's energizing to see that people really do care for us and care for Juniper Hill. That is what's going to make us successful. I'm impressed with the way Robert dealt with his staff meeting. I've got real hope that he can make this place work, but he has another lesson to learn. He thinks people aren't spending money at Juniper Hill because of the recession, but I think it's the snobbish atmosphere and the high prices that have kept people away. I'm taking Robert to a fantastic local brewery to show him how a warm welcome can translate into money in the bank. Let's go and have a beer. Let's get in with the locals. Trust me, they won't beat you up. <laughs> you are like a fish out of water right now, honestly. <laughs> You're like a vegetarian in the middle of a big steak tartare. Look at you. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, I love the people from our region. The Upper Valley is filled with amazing people. The Juniper Hill is not I filled know. with local people. Wouldn't you welcome this atmosphere? Oh, oh yeah. In your stately house? Absolutely. Everyone is welcome. Stand on there and tell them you need them. Off we go. If I could have your attention, please. I'm Robert. I'm the innkeeper at Juniper Hill Inn. We just want to tell everybody we'd love to have you all up at Juniper Hill Inn. And uh, we need the help right now. So if you can come up and have dinner or just have a drink and just say hi, it would be great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done. If Robert can always be that inviting to the locals, he surely has it in him to be the leader of the inn. When was the last time you brought Ari here for a beer? We haven't been here probably in six months. How was he after you spoke to the team like that? You know, the, the, the interesting thing with Ari is yeah. his exterior is Finnish. You know, he's very stern. stern, but he feels deeply. He can't express it though, can he? He can't. 
He's emotionally constipated. I think he gave up. That can't come across to the staff. That can't come across to the customer. So no. you, you've got to almost isolate yourself from that. But he's getting through it. But he's not going to be the face. He's not going to be the ink. No, he's not. But he can provide a phenomenal amount of support behind the scenes. Cheers to that. Coming up. It's fantastic. I show off the new and improved Juniper Hill Inn. Oh, my goodness. Look at this. But assistant innkeeper Sarah's joy is short-lived. I'll be in my room. You look terrible. What's the matter? I'm sick of it, Gordon. It's been a tough week here at Juniper Hill Inn, and owner Robert's pompous ways have been maddening. I don't have a secretary, Gordon. I'm sorry. Are you always this pathetic? But he's finally come off his pedestal to get on the same level as his team. You are all valuable to Juniper Hill, and we want to show you that we are going to make a difference. Overnight, my team has been working on a remarkable transformation. And with relaunch upon us, it's a chance for a fresh start for everyone. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the new Juniper Hill Inn. It's no longer a hangout for the super rich or your mates <laughs> getting freebies. Yeah, it's now a nice, warm and very welcoming country inn. And trust me, everyone is welcome, whether you're driving up here in a Mercedes or even a pickup truck. <laughs> you ready? Yes. yes we let's are. go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. Please, come in. Come through. The Great Hall is a beautiful room, but it was hidden by vast amounts of furniture. Oh, my That's goodness. Nice. Look at this. My team have edited the collection and created a feeling of comfort and space. When I walked in the Great Hall, it felt like a different room. Gordon put together this amazing place. It feels comfortable and warm. You have a spacious, gracious, warm reception room. Look at it. Gone is that hideous makeshift bar. Thank you. Gone. Yes, nowhere to go because they have proper signs. Ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. Come through. Oh, it's it's warm and welcoming. So oh, I love this. No longer feels like your grandmother's parlor. It really is a dining room. It's what you expect from a country inn. You know, it has an identity. Gone are those hideous sofas that <laughs> nobody can sit and eat dinner in. Ari, what do you think? Very nice. Very you nice. like it? Very open. Excellent. I'll show you my bedroom. Okay. Please. <laughs> Everybody else can come too, please. You ready? We're ready. In you go. Do you know what's wrong with this room? Nothing. You don't need to do anything to them. The only thing wrong was the smell in room one, and a plumber has taken care of that. The guest rooms are the absolute highlight of your inn. That meant something, because it meant we were on the right track. We just needed a, a, a better directions. Now, the key to filling this is to charge sensible prices. I would rather have the room sold at Absolutely. a cheaper price and have an 85% occupancy rate across the year. Bring the yeah. prices down, fill it, let them enjoy this quality. And... The stunning bedrooms didn't need changing, but there's one room that did need a significant overhaul in order to bring in much needed cash flow. Now, there's one more little thing I want to show you downstairs. OK. You ready? <laughs> I'm ready. Let's go. Come with me. OK. We need to attract the local community. I'd like to welcome you to the Blue Bar. Whoa. Blue Bar. Oh, look at this flower. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Ari, are you thrilled? The best new local bar in Windsor. Fantastic. This is so great. Walk in and see the people sitting there and the games on the tables and the beautiful drinks. It was very emotional. I loved it. The Blue Bar is exactly what the town of Windsor, Vermont and Juniper Hill Inn need. I'm hoping it will be popular, especially on a day like today, when the inn hosts its first ever Sunday lunch service. The staff are all getting ready for the arrival of their lunch guests. Five, six, seven, eight. So you've got four tables each. But while everybody else is busy, Ari seems lost and needs reminding of his role here at the inn. I'm here. Oh, jeez. Right. <laughs> Okay. What I had to go the doing? other way. Are you in? Are you out? Are you doing the checks? What are you doing? I was checking in people. You're That's... checking in. But I thought that was the gracious. I thought you were checking in people. Yeah. You want to check them in and Shut take up. them up? Uh, That'll be I, great. Would you Thanks. be so kind? Just two yes. seconds. I'm so sorry. Would you continue that? Of course. Can I just have you for 30 seconds? Yeah, sure. Come this way. I thought you were going to leave the front of the house to Robert. I thought you were going to be the back of the house. No, one thing is that Robert asked me to, to check in people with, uh, because he had to uh, take people to the dining room. <sighs> yeah, I know, but. We have a saying in England. Yes. Too many chefs spoil the broth. You're not a natural innkeeper. 
Oh, okay. okay. He needs your help. Yes. But yes, behind the scenes. Yes. Explain to Robert that you're going to support him from behind the scenes. Yes. Please. Okay. Sure. Please. I'm going to do that. I think Ari has finally got the picture and understands that he needs to play to his strengths. I really hope that things can continue to improve now. Come on, Sophie. We better remove the dog. She's going to eat the food. <laughs> Sophie, our poodle, she shouldn't be in there. I mean, it's a, it's a place where we eat. Come on, Sophie. Come on, come, come, come. That's not for you. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, honey. Excuse me. Come on, come on. I take come care on. of the dog, OK? Excuse me. The dog shouldn't be in the bar. He's on the seats eating the food. Really? I am the boss, OK? What Don't ever say? talk to me that way again. Excuse me. Don't ever, and I mean it. I'll be in my room, and I don't need to be yelled at. I'm coming towards the end of my stay at Vermont's Juniper Hill Inn, and I thought we'd turn the corner. But as the inn's first ever Sunday lunch service approaches, assistant innkeeper Sarah has gone missing. Where's Sarah gone? I haven't seen Sarah in about a half an hour. Is she OK? I don't know. You don't know? OK, just asking. Has Sarah gone home? What? Has Sarah gone home? No? The team can't afford to be a man down. I've got to find her. Who is it? It's me, Sarah's Gordon. Oh, hi, Gordon. Are you OK? Oh, no. I... What? Hold on a second. Dear, oh, dear. Danny, I thought you joined us for lunch. Oh, thanks. I'm not going to. What's the matter? You want to come here? Yeah, you look terrible. What's the matter? Oh, I'm just really That's upset. Fine. I don't want to get upset. You were with us half an hour ago. Customers are in the bar. I know. And My they... first level just arrived. I just expect you to be there in terms of you're part of this team. I know, but I, I'm sick of being yelled at by Ari. I'm sick of it, Gordon. When did he yell at you? Just a few minutes ago because I asked him to take the dog out of the dining room. Naturally. It's his dog and it's sitting on the bar furniture. Okay. Please come back down. Oh. Buck up and come down. Nobody's ever seen me break down in tears in this inn. It's never happened before. Just come back downstairs. OK. Please? Yeah, well, Gordon. OK. Yeah, I want to help I don't want to see you upset. And the girls need you down there. They do. And I'm just, I'm just really <laughs> mad at them. No, well, let me go and have a word with Ari. This is ridiculous. Get yourself ready. The place is full of locals, and they'd love to see you too. OK. Please. Uh, smiley. Yes? Good yes. Girl. Yes, I'll bounce back. I'm not sure why Ari is snapping at his staff, but it just proves my gut was right about his place being behind the scenes. Ari? Yes? <laughs> I've just found Sarah upstairs in floods of tears. Everything okay? No, we had a little run-in because we both are very strong people. He snapped at me and I snapped back. Do you think the dog should be running around in the bar? No, no when they are guests to come So was she right or wrong? She was right. Would it be appropriate for you to apologise to her? Do you, do you oh, feel yeah. that you're yeah. responsible from behind the scenes? Is there any way we could just, for this first Sunday lunch, sure. try to keep the team together? Okay. I think Ari's heart is in the right place, but his tone is all wrong for an innkeeper. He needs to be the power behind the throne. I'm sure this is going to be one of the busiest days yet at Juniper Hill Inn. And I need to remind Chef Julian to make good use of his sous chef Nida if he's going to have any chance of being successful. Julian's proved to Robert and I that he has the talent and the potential in the kitchen. Now he just needs the help to execute. I know you're adamant the fact that you're going to work on your own, but you are not a one-man band, yeah? Yes, Chef. Encourage, entice. Over to the stove. The local community have responded to Robert's invitation, and there's a great atmosphere as people turn up to check out the bar and sample the new menu I put together with Chef Julian. Tara, nice to see you. Welcome to Juniper Hill. Hi, Hi Anya, dear. Nice, nice to see you. you. As well as new arrivals, the inn has a return guest, hotel inspector Steve Talon. His first visit was a disaster. Very disappointed. Didn't meet expectations. From the moment I walked in, with no greeting, I was totally lost. This is Robert and his team's chance to prove to Steve that they've learned their lesson. I hope this time Hello they're there. flawless. How are you, Mr. Talon? Nice to see you. Nice to see you yes. again. Welcome. So this is our new menu. OK, what's going next? Coming up next, we have one trout. The key to this place running smoothly is communication among the entire staff. But Chef Julian still doesn't seem to get that. How long for the first flat iron, please, Nida? Medium rare. Medium rare. Ask her, Julian. Medium rare. Talk to Nida. I don't care what it's about, the fucking weather. I don't care, but talk to her, OK? Come on, you got to talk. I just said, come on. She can put things on a plate for you, just refusing to talk to her. And it's going to be so fucking painful now. I simplified the menu in order to get it so much easier for you. You know that? Yes, Chef. And the menu was designed for you to open up and talk, OK? Yes, Chef. Look at me. Yes, Chef. Broaden your mind out. And all you do is one plate, 
focus. Next plane, focus. And I just want you to open up a little bit. She's there to help. Thank you. You know what, let me do this. Just help with the skillet, help with the skillet. Fucking hell. Julian! Yes, come here. Fucking hell. What's the matter with you? You've just shut down on me. Now, do you want to give me your jacket? I'll do it for you. No, chef. It's not difficult. I know, chef. Can you do this? Open up. Come on. You've just shut down. With Robert working well with the team... OK, thank you so much. ..and Ari staying out of the way, the bar is bustling. How are you? Welcome. What can I get you to drink? But Chef Julian needs to raise his game and start communicating. If we're going to make today a success... You've just shut down on me. Open up, please. Get it together. Let's go. You'll be at four minutes at that table. So you do one plate, I do one plate. Is that good? All right, so then you get, with the lamb shank, then you get some lamb glaze, which is right here. Julian. Nice. Much better. Look yes, at me. Yes, much better. Yes, chef. Good. How is everybody out there? Chicken. 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 Wow. The locals are definitely noticing a change it's here. It was wonderful. It's very good. I was very surprised. Perfect. As you're saying, it's perfect for me. Great. Time to see if the hotel inspector has to. Hi, oh, sir. Good to see you again. Good to see you, too. Recognise a few changes? In some ways, I didn't recognise it at all. I really felt so good. What, the uh, entrance hall in terms of...? The total openness, the welcoming, but the signs everywhere. When you walked in, was it warm? Was there a... Oh, it's great warmth. Now I feel it, it has that diamond collection feel. Is that a good job? Nice news. Yeah. Enjoy lunch. Appreciate it. Pork's amazing. OK. Thank you. I'll try. Thank you. There's a great buzz at the inn. Sir, can I have a second? Yes. I hope that's not all about to change. I'm really busy. I just want to hear that. I'm sorry about what happened. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I mean, okay. I'm trying to help, Barry, oh, no. and you're, you're snarling yeah, yeah. me a lot. Yeah, I'm sorry. This food is affordably priced. It's really, really tasty. And it's nice to know a nice place to send people to get a drink and relax and everything, and that's hard in the area, so that's great. Robert and Ari's communication has improved by leaps and bounds since I've been at the inn. Let's go back. Just for a second. But actions speak louder than words, and I think Robert is starting to understand that. I just wanted to tell you that um, I really appreciate all the extra effort you're giving. Not just this week, but the entire time you've been here. And this is your paycheck, literally, because we know you need it. We wish we had more. We put $100 extra in there for you, just so you have a little bit extra, because we really do appreciate you, Ryan. So, thanks. Thank you very much. You and I are going to bring this back, and Ari's going to join us. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't been that emotionally moved in a long time. I, I feel like it's all been worth it now. I just, I feel like I, it's appreciated. What a week. I think this business is on the road to recovery, and Robert and his team, with Ari in the background, can really make this place work, because once the locals invest in this place, word is going to spread big time. Beautiful. It's time for me to say my goodbyes. But with the crowd enjoying themselves in the bar and loving the great value in the dining room, it's a hard place to leave. Really good. This is nice company. This is, yeah. and we're sharing the lamb shakes. Oh, lamb. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Uh, right. Finally, you seem to have got this under control. Yes. Yes, chef. And you're opening up. Yes, chef. Don't stop talking. Yes, chef. Communicate. Good job. Thank you, chef. He might have beat a few people down, but then he brought a few people right back up, and uh, that was necessary. I'm just glad he didn't smack me with a spatula. Ari? Copy. I've come to say goodbye. I was uh, doing Looking my paychecks. Yourself. You're okay. writing paychecks? Yes. Good luck with the place. Okay. It's a business. Absolutely. Look after yourself. Uh -huh. Look after Robert. Uh -huh. And support him in all the right places. Thank you. Best wishes. We are very grateful for him that he has patience for us. <laughs> Because it, it's not uh, easy to restructure molded minds. Look after yourself, yes? Okay. Look after yourself. Okay. Mike, how are you feeling? I'm feeling great. And it seems like you've got this under control. I'm going to keep it under control. Well, the staff are doing the job, the bar's functioning, the dining room's functioning, kitchen's functioning. That's good, that's beautiful. Ari's in the RV. And there are people. And they seem to be having a good time. You're on the track now. We're on track. I have a little present for you. Stay there. Having Gordon come to Juniper Hill has meant a lot to us. It was harder than hell, but ultimately, I know it's going to do great things for our staff, 
and for our town. This is something that money cannot buy, but this week you've earned it. Now, the most important thing, please keep it up. This is your side to be part of the amazing setup, the Diamond Collection. Thank you. You deserve this. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well Safe done. journey home. Well he done. really did awaken me, put a fire in me, and I want him to come back and say, you really did it. That's our goal. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> what a beautiful day. I can't believe those storage units are still there. If I was Robert, I'd lock Ari in one of them. <laughs> Tonight on Hotel Hell, in Northern California near Sacramento, a 200-year-old hotel... This is the actual bed that President Grant slept in. ...is about to become history. Look at them all on that. Three buddies decided to buy the business. It's like, don't run, don't run, don't list. Are you guys really the fucking owners? It's story. But they're so busy drinking... Were you drunk? Yes. Drink three for me! Dancing. They really like to get lap dances. Lap dance. And having fun at the hotel and the guests... Can we ask you to check in for the room? ...unneglected. If I don't do something soon, the town will lose its most important historic building to a bunch of frat boys. Surrounded by the stunning vineyards of the Sierra Nevada foothills is Murphy's, California, a picturesque destination for wine enthusiasts and tourists. This historic town has been home to Murphy's Hotel for over 150 years. The hotel has an illustrious history. Presidents and legends have come to stay in this national landmark. Partners Brian, Kevin and Joel bought the business nine months ago. I own the hotel with my two partners. I run the dining room, I'm the dining room manager. Kevin, he's our bar manager, and Joel, he's our chef. Wonderful, thank you. But it's no one's job to look after the hotel. It's historic, but I think it needs to be maintenance. The historic rooms, I wouldn't even stay in them, and I get a discount. That's air conditioning. That's in. Behind the historic main building, there are 20 so-called modern bedrooms. The modern rooms are maybe modern in the 60s. These are modern? It kind of looks like my grandma's room. It smells like it, too. Sadly, the owners are too busy drinking in the bar to notice the state of the hotel. Oh, man. Owning a bar at 32 years old can be just a great party seven days a week. Give us some tongue, Ratty, some tongue. What you ladies out doing tonight? What do you think we're doing? Kevin and I, we love women, and it is a passion, and we have a lot of them coming through here. Don't act like you've never done it. And they're not just all young. We got the Cougar clans coming through here. We are not one to discriminate. We take customer service to the next level. Cheers, boys and girls. Put them up. You know, as a California American male, we were taught during college that uh, it's good. Binge drinking is fun. Why is everybody empty? And I am the fun captain. <laughs> she tried to roofie me. You see that? I am kind of the party guy. I want to make everyone have fun. Right now, they're just kind of drunk idiots. If you're after a drunken lap dance, you've come to the right place. If you want a good night's sleep, you best go elsewhere. I'm exhausted, and I keep hearing these loud noises outside. These people are drunk, and it's driving me crazy, and I'm going to go complain. What do I do for you? I have a room upstairs. Sure. It's really noisy. The saloon is always first, and then the hotel just seems like an afterthought. This registered national landmark has been run ragged by the owners and is hemorrhaging money. If the guys continue to party and not take things seriously, the hotel's just going to close down. If I don't do something fast, this place won't last another 150 days, let alone years. I think Gordon is going to say, fuck this place, that they're screwed. I'm on my way to Murphy's in Northern California. Now, this place is in amongst some of the most stunning vineyards anywhere in the world. What a beautiful town. 
look how busy this place is as well. Littered with stunning little tasting rooms. Now, anyone lucky enough to be running a small hotel here should be sold out every night. If they're not, they must be doing something seriously wrong. Historic. Murphy's Hotel has been placed in the National Register of Historic Places. Nice. Wow. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? So, first name is? Kanitha. Kanitha. Nice Gorgeous to meet name. you. Is it always that busy out there? Um, we usually do get pretty busy on the weekends. Incredible. Um, we have about 16 tasting rooms just within walking distance of the hotel. I love how historic this place is, but have you not updated the furniture since 1850? Bloody hell. My God, it's like going to your grandma's funeral. My God. <laughs> there definitely is a difference between historic and then tacky and old. What we have is definitely tacky. It looks like someone's died in those chairs. So you've been here for a long time? About a year and a half. And what's wrong with the place? Um, well, management, the owners. The hotel is owned by three guys. They're in their early 30s. There's Kevin, Joel, and Brian. And they really like to use the hotel as their playground, oh. um, partying, drinking, giving lap dances to the bar patrons. So, uh, so just, uh, there's lap dance. Lap dances while they're bartending. The owners, if they continue partying and giving lap dances in the bar and acting how they've been, the place is just going to keep going downhill. We put you in the presidential Ulysses S. Grant room. This is the actual bed that President Grant slept in, except for the mattress. We did get rid of that. What's the glass box for? Um, this is our display room. Display room? Yes, so guests and customers can come up and take a look. When were these last um, replaced? Dreadful. Um, oh, shit. I can't really tell you that. Uh, it sounds like I'm in a museum. So am I a guest or an exhibit? You're a guest. Darling. Darling. What are those people doing? Yes. Come on through, everybody. Take a look inside. Oh, nice. Close the door, Emma. Close the door. Okay, we're going to be on display today. It's usual for the tourists to come through sometimes, and if a guest checks in and they just for some reason forget to close their door, they're going to have people crowded around looking at them. They literally come over and they, hello, how are you? Well, that's embarrassing. <laughs> it's like a goldfish bowl in here. Ladies, thank God I wasn't in my underpants. <laughs> Is that normal? They just come and have a look around? Um, yeah. You know, um, we normally get complaints, right. and there's really no one that handles that or takes care of it. But there's three owners. Yes. A lot of the time, they're busy bartending or drinking. Or lap or dancing. Or lap dancing, exactly. This is Unfortunately. OK, I'm going to unpack. Can this uh, room be off the tour for a while? We'll see what we can do. Thank you. You're welcome. First impressions. I mean, it may be steeped in history, but it smells like the room's steeped in piss. We put you in the presidential Ulysses S. Grant room. I've just arrived at Murphy's Hotel near Sacramento, California. It's like I'm in a museum. We're going to be on display today. Hello. Thank God I wasn't in my underpants. Time for a bite to eat. I hope the food here is less stale than my bedroom. Ah, uh, Murphy's historic return, boy of the month. Uh, he looks a happy bunny. Oh, Hello. how are you? Party of one? Party of one. Okay. Uh, not a party for one. Uh, <laughs> good to see you. I'm Brian. Is that the same? Congratulations, <laughs> employee of the month. Um, Thank you. Do you get a bonus? Do you get a night nice stay? No, do you get a free um, dinner? I, I'm one of the only employees that never made the cut yet. I see. You just put yourself in, and what are the owners going to say about that? I'm one of them. I'm Brian. Stop yes. it. Yes. Come on. Hey, the other owners got their shot on there. You're the owner and you made yourself the employee of the month. Yeah. Are you the man with the G-string? The G-string? Reception was telling me, do you do lap dancing? Oh, no, that would probably be Kevin. Oh, I see. I don't know. My booty's a little too big to do the right. lap dancing. OK, now. I was going to say, I can't wait to see that one. All right, I'd love to meet the other two, the chef and the lap dancer. Are they around? Are they, really? You want me to bring them out? Yeah. All right, Kevin and Joel and I, we're all equal shareholders in this business. But it was my plan to buy the hotel. Hello. Kevin. Kevin, Gordon, good to see you, buddy. Nice and this is? Hi, Gordon and Joel. Joel, so you're the lap dancer. There might have been some lap dancers. Oh, OK, right. I'm, just, yeah. just, just, I'm dying to find I mean, out. I'm not a, I'm not a professional. <laughs> Maybe once in a while, but OK, fine. 
I'm a wild one when I start drinking. I get a little stripper action going on, or they get a little rowdy, and can be the most fun that any young adult could ever dream of. It's obviously the chef. Yes. Restaurant manager. And the lap dancer. Bar manager. Bar manager. So who's in charge? All three of us. No such thing. Mm. So who runs the hotel? Who's in charge of the, the hotel? Hotel manager job doesn't really entail much. With three owners, normally there's one that takes the reins and two others silent. Uh, none of you sound and look like an owner. Well, Gordon thinks we don't look like owners, but what, what's an owner look like? We bought the hotel nine months ago. Right, and you guys go back a long way. Just kind of met each other 15 years ago. And... I'm confused whether it's the three musketeers or the three stooges. Anyway, I'm going to have a quick bite to eat. It's been a, a long journey. Well, I'm excited to taste the food. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Gordon's going to love our food. Joel works really hard at everything he puts out. Everything that comes out the window is a great product. I can't believe this hotel is owned by three guys uh, with a pink dining room. Pink's the new black. Well, it's like a girl's bedroom. Ghastly, ghastly. Um, any specials on today? We had a fresh Alaskan halibut mm -hmm. with a... Uh, now that I'm talking to you, I've, I've completely forgotten. No, we had we had the halibut with a. Well, this is the first time I forget specials. Don't worry. Why don't you check with the chef? All right, I will. You are the restaurant manager, right? Yes, and I was a server too. Restaurant manager, employee of the month, and owner. Yes, all of the above. Employee of the month. I'm going to take that plaque back. Can't even remember the specials. Hey, Joel, I forgot the specials just now. Ryan just kind of forgot our specials. I have seen him do that before. The special is available tonight, the macadamia encrusted halibut. Right, let's try the escargot. Entrees, lamb shank, and then what's the calamari door? What does door mean? It's a doré, it's just a calamari steak. Oh, I'll go for that as well. OK. Thank you, I'll keep all of the menu. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Once Gordon has a bite of Joel's food, Order in. it's going to put a smile on his face, guaranteed. Thank you. <laughs> Here we go, sir. Escargot. <laughs> in a red wine garlic sauce. Red wine garlic. Mm -hmm. Wow. Jeez. Absolutely rancid. Have a little taste. I mean, nothing's hot. Uh, yeah, strange taste. You know, that's the first, actually, the first time in the history that I've eaten the escargot. Oh, really? And um, I'm going to say that I, I don't like it in any way. No. The escargot tasted like a dirty, funky, disgusting flip-flop. If you uh, sauteed a flip-flop, I think that would be a good, good way of describing it. That was fucking disgusting. I, I want to run home and get some mouthwash for sure, but well, I don't know. Do don't... whatever you need to. <laughs> All right. Yeah, because they stink. Can I water for you? Mm. Please. Do you have any um, little samples of like wine flights? Anything regional? We have talked about that, but we have not implemented it. So you've been talking about it for nine months, but you haven't actually done it yet. No one's even bothered the sort of wine flights or trying to get it together. So. So you've had this place almost a year, and you haven't implemented something that this town thrives on. Correct. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you tasted those escargot? I mean, escargot? Not really. Have you, have you eaten? I mean, you eat here, right? Not very often. Right. Uh, when was the last time you guys sat down and had dinner in the restaurant? Never sat down with all three of us together. Strange, strange. I'm getting slightly nervous that nothing actually gets done here. Anyway, I'm living in hope. May I have some more bread? For sure. Uh, I got the lamb shank coming right out, right? Oh, my God. Look at that. Holy crap. What is that? This is our lamb shank. That's a weird-looking lamb shank. Visually, it looks like the biggest plate of puke. I've never personally had lamb shank ever been here. I do not like lamb. You're the restaurant manager. You don't like lamb, don't eat escargot. I'm the, yeah, I'm the restaurant manager, but I'm not, I'm not the chef. Wow. I think I would just call that a dog's dinner. What a mess. I do apologize again. <clears throat> I'm totally embarrassed that our food is this quality. I've always thought it was better. Hey, Joel. Yeah. The lamb shank. He mentioned that the vegetable gravy goo was a little, little too much. Oh, OK. I'm going to run this out. OK. So fine dining. Frozen, inedible, nasty, excrement. I mean, I, I'm amazed. What's this one? This is the calamari doré steak. That's not garlic in there again, is it? There is garlic in there again. Jeez. It's just how that dish is prepared. Everything's just laced with garlic. Please. Be my guest. I, 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 this... 
What, what is it trying to be? A sponge? I'm embarrassed. I'm chewing on it going, I just want to spit this shit out right now. Like, this is terrible. So that's the first bite I've ever taken of that. You know this stuff's on the menu, right? You're aware of it. This is your hotel, yes? Yes, I'm not correct. being punked here that you guys are the owners. We are the owners. The owners haven't sent their sons in to take the hit. No. No, this, you definitely this, are the owners. This is us. OK. How do these three stooges qualify to run an historic hotel like this? If they can't even get the food and wine right, how are they going to improve the hotel? I feel like I'm being looked after by college kids. Do they want me to come out? It'd probably be good, yeah, come on out. Sorry, but we're very impressed. Uh, no, I mean, far from impressed. Have you ever actually stood back and looked at that lamb shank as a dish and... It's the most horrendous, the most drabby, disgusting-looking fucking lamb shank. Have you given up? No. No. No way. We just started. We're not giving up yet. You just started? Yeah. Have you ever just walked in from outside, checked in, went up to the rooms, and no. you've never done that? Never have. Have you ever done that? No, sir. Have you ever done that? I have not. Oh, my God. What have you improved on since you bought it, truthfully? I make people laugh and smile every day. Seriously? And what have you changed? Weekends, we serve breakfast all day. What have you changed, um, menu-wise? Menu, um, um... Fucking hell. I got one, two, three. Three idiots that haven't changed anything. You don't stay here, you don't eat together, you don't criticise the food. Shit reception, shit room, shit food, and three clueless owners. Owners? My fucking ass. I'm staying at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California. And after being put on display for gawking tourists... Hello, Hello. ...and eating an atrocious lunch... I think I would just call that a dog's dinner. What a mess. I need to see the three nitwit owners in action. Word has got out that I'm in Murphy's and the hotel and restaurant are full of people. I feel sorry for all of them. Joel is running the kitchen. Chickens are burned. Chickens burn. Kevin is getting busy in the bar, and Brian is overseeing the dining room. It should be Gear, nice Gear cheese. Gear, yeah. isn't it? Gear cheese. Gear. Gear. I mean. So guests trying to check in are left to fend for themselves. Can we ask you to check in for the room. Is um, everyone okay? Uh, yeah, we're waiting. We went up to the front desk and there was nobody there, so trying to check in for hotel. The, uh, it's one of the owners nearby. I guess I just arrived to check in. You get Brian urgently or Kevin. What, what about it? About a guest checking in. Oh, guest checking? I can As, do that too. Yeah. Would you, please? I'm sorry. Thank Excuse you. me. You shouldn't have to come looking for us in the bar. So that's what happens when guests come in late. They go to the bar looking for... Yes, that is uh, how we do it. Have you ever done that? Checked in and then found the reception closed and went into the bar looking for Keith? No. no I've, I've, right. I've actually only stayed at hotels probably only a matter of 20 times in my whole entire life. Wow, and you're a hotel owner? Yeah. So how come you guys don't have anybody up here? We got the bartenders or servers like me sometimes taking care of it. Wow. Just sign the top there, please. Once guests get to the rooms, they're in for another unpleasant surprise. <laughs> Let's wait for the drunkards to go home before we open that up. Have a good night. It's very noisy in there from the bar and the street. The owner's ignorance is evident in everything I've seen so far. I'm curious to see what it's like in the parts I haven't seen, like the walk-in fridge. What the fuck that is? Oof. Raw pork, cooked chicken, sat next to each other. Fucking disgusting. I wish I'd seen this before I had my lunch. Yeah. Fine dining. It's not. Look at that. Fucking. Look at the mold growing on there. Oh, you dirty fuckers. Bloody hell. There's mold all up the sides too. 
Oh, Jesus Christ. Look at the fucking mold on that. This is absolutely disgusting. <coughs> Bollocks. So the walk-in, how often is that fridge cleaned out? Uh, like twice a week. Twice a week? Yes. Marked, Marked everything out? Yes. Yeah? Yes. Come with me, all of you. All right. Especially the owners. Sounds good. Sounds good. Really? Fucking hell. Oh, that was an hour. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Fucking moldy tortillas. There should not be fucking any moldy fucking food. It's fucking horrible. And when was this made? Last Saturday. No, I need it. Just I smell that. Need to toss it. I know that. And this terrible. You should be fucking ashamed. Okay. Okay. No, it's not okay. What is that? It's to be uh, black mold. What's it supposed mold? to be? Thai chili marinade. Thai chili marinade. But I don't know if it's been used in a while. The sauces was from a chef that had been there, like in 2006 or seven or something. This is exactly the same way as you run this fucking hotel. You don't give a shit. Well, I give you a shit. I give a shit. If I this do. is your dream of running a hotel, then how about manning up and look like fucking owners? We, we are. This is fucking unacceptable, and it's not going to happen anymore. Have you checked out? Because you should do no, the I'm whole not. thing. Say to these two, fuck it. I'm he has out. not checked out. He's Can a you let him talk? I have Sorry. not checked out, and I obviously I need to pay more attention and do better at my job. How any of you can run a fucking business? Do you ever see three CEOs, three fucking no. general managers, no. three fucking executive chefs? Huh? It's like dumber, dumber, and dumbest! Since my arrival at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California, you should be fucking ashamed. I've been appalled by the three clueless owners. It's like dumber, dumber, and dumbest! Are you guys really the fucking owners? True story. Fuck off! Unbelievable. I mean, three young idiots that are playing at running a hotel, and not one of them have got a fucking clue. I'm mad at Joel. I'm a fucking owner. I don't fucking want to clean. I've been here 12 hours. It's unacceptable. I do want to prove Gordon Ramsay wrong about me being a fucking idiot, fucking dumb and dumber, fucking scoundrel, wanker, fucking whatever British fucking terminology that fucking wanker has to say across from the fucking different pond guy. But I do respect him. I'm gonna get a drink. but sorry, I, need, I need to wind down, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go play poker in Reno later tonight, and I'm not going to sleep. Listen to that fucking music. How on earth is anyone gonna ever get to sleep in this hotel? Jesus Christ. That's crazy. You know what? Frog's ass is for everyone in this building right here, right now. This, this doesn't make sense. Anyone in here? Fucking frog's ass. Unreal. There's got to be a quieter room somewhere. Clean. I've been here. I want to go get that cleaning because it's number one right now. Is this a? This is a joke. 
Is this a joke? They're partying, and I'm upset, and uh, we're just, I don't know, they're partying. Yeah. What time do you show? Is it fun to yeah. just asked. They, they wanted to see it, and uh, I was upset earlier, and I'm upset at Joel. I'm upset at everything that's going on, and I want, this is, I'm just upset. How about, how about, thank you for two minutes about your guests? I want to go clean the walk-in. I'm going to go clean the walk-in. You just walk off like that. Hey, you know what? I'm going to go clean the walk-in. Okay, because good. you know why? Why are you acting like that, a fucking jerk? Because I'm, I'm upset. That was fucking unacceptable on there. It was unacceptable. The fucking walk-in with the fucking black mole. So why don't you do something about it? I, hey, I was... I, if I... Hey, everyone in this... You just walk off like that. Hey, you hey. know what? I'm going to go clean the walk. Okay, good. Because you know why? Why are you acting like a fucking jerk? Brian is coming undone and is drinking on the job. I'm done trying to get through to him today. I'm, I'm upset. That was fucking unacceptable in there. It was unacceptable. The fucking walking, okay? You're drunk. Go home. All right. I'm going to go clean the walk in now, too. I'm going to do it in a T-shirt. Jesus Christ. I've been told the hotel offers modern rooms further from the bar, so I've asked to be put in one so I can get away from all this madness. It's not exactly quiet out here either. And they call these modern rooms? It looks like my grandma's house from the 1950s. Look at this wallpaper. Hideous. And what sort of hotel is this when you can't get a good night's sleep? <laughs> This was supposed to be quieter down here. <laughs> what an awful night's sleep. <sighs> Fucking shower is hideous. Water's freezing. Place stinks. Man. <laughs> Oh, no. My ass. This place is such a mess. From the awful decor, to the dreadful food, to the drunken partying all night long. I need to get the whole team together and find out how it's gotten into this state. Morning, guys. Good morning. morning. Let's uh, go downstairs, have a meeting. Sounds good. Yeah, with the team. Cool. Man, that was a bad night's sleep. The noise above here yeah. was insane. I came back downstairs last night, uh, and Brian's ripping his shirt up, shouting, screaming about, hey, shots are all on me. Is that normal? Is that really how these managers operate? When they're off duty, they come behind the bar, turn up the jukebox when I've already turned it down, pour themselves drinks. It's their personal frat house. How does that make you feel? Your employees are concerned that you're drunk in the bar. When do I treat you all fucking badly? What? Yeah. When it comes to scheduling, how many days that you guys have asked off for that you didn't get off? It's not what I'm asking. If you're going to run a hotel, it's not about having a fucking party. It's about levels of discipline. Well, just so you know, it's not happening anymore. But I'm not going to be as happy sometimes for you guys. You are as good as your team. They represent you. And based on what I've seen, I don't think you represent them properly. OK, you go first and tell these owners what they need to hear. We lose a lot of reservations when we don't have somebody to answer the phone. You know, when we leave the front desk, we put the phone in the bar. After 8 p.m., we are the front desk, we are the bartenders. I saw that last night. Yeah. They don't answer the phone because no. they don't hear it. We need online booking. You know what that takes away, online bookings? As the front desk girls, you know. We talked about getting rid of the front desk and putting a computer there. And we don't have a person there. So I'll check in. That's so how fine. do you feel about that? So they complain you threaten to fire them. No. Yep. No, that's not what it is. No. Yes, it is. We, we, yes, it is. You just listening. totally attacked me. I'm afraid to express my feelings. I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. Really? Nobody's threatened here with their job. Nobody has. You been. never threatened me by being fired? I have before. Were you drunk? Yes. You were drunk. Mm -hmm. So. That's the message I'm trying to get through to your thick skulls. You're threatening staff whilst inebriated. This is crazy. People who deserve to be fired are these three standing here. There's no structure. Somebody needs to step up and run the business and everybody else follows suit. You need one general manager. That's the issue. You need to be a leader from the top. That's one person. There can be 25 owners, but there needs to be one general manager. If something doesn't change, you guys are going to lose this place. OK, which one of you is capable of stepping up and running this business? I'm 
I'm at Murphy's Hotel in Northern California. You're the owner and you made yourself the employee of the month. Yeah. The place is a mess because these three owners behave like frat boys. Cheers, boys and girls! And none of them is a leader. You've checked out! So the staff don't know which way to turn. I'm afraid to express my feelings. I'm afraid I'm going to get fired. Things have got to change. There needs to be one general manager. Somebody needs to take charge. I'm going to take charge. I'm going to run the business. I'm our leader. Out of us three, it's going to be me, guaranteed. If you're going to run the hotel, you got it. You run the hotel. Yeah, 100%. So, Kevin and Joel, are you willing to give him the support and the autonomy to actually run this place? Yes. Yes. Brian, it's your responsibility now to general manage and absolutely toe the line. Gotcha. But there are three rules. Rule number one, to stop drinking on the floor. Gotcha. Rule number two, you have to stop working the floor. Yep. And rule number three, you have to fucking grow some. Mm -hmm. Fast. Mm -hmm. Brian does know the most out of the three of them, so I really do think if he could stop his party in ways, he could really do it. Trust me, if you don't grow up now, you never will. I got it. It's a hotel, not a frat house. I'm not going to be drinking, and uh, I'm going to be an owner. Thank God for that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to change. I'm going to be more of an owner and not a friend slash co-worker. And they're going to see a, a different Brian. The future of this historic national landmark is now in Brian's hands. And I need to know that he cares enough to be responsible. You are young, ambitious, mm -hmm. slightly naive. Mm -hmm. You're going at it in totally the wrong way. You're on the verge of losing this business. Hopefully not. And how would you feel? if you lost the business. It would be horrible. It would be horrible, because that's already three years of 60-hour uh, weeks. It's horrible. I'm here to help, but I want you to understand the mess you're in. It's not good. All right. Do you understand? I do. Deep down inside, there's no two ways about it. You're a fun guy. You've got a lot to offer. Yeah. But just stop being irresponsible. I will. And just man up. Yeah, for sure. And you can do it. Okay. I want to make this work. Mm -hmm. From today on, it's going to be a, a change business. It's different. All right? OK. OK. <laughs> Couldn't see that smile back in your face. Thank you. I'll see you later. From this day forward, I'm a change man. And the business is going to reflect all those changes. With Brian ready to take charge as general manager, my design team has worked all night to modernize Murphy's Hotel. And now, it's time to reveal the new look hotel to Brian and his team. Brian, how are you, sir? Gordon, good. How are you doing? You're very smart. You good? You're doing good. Yeah, good to see you. Smart ladies, how are we? Doing great. Yeah? Yes, doing really good. Excited. Good. Right. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the new and improved Murphy's historic hotel. Are you ready? Ready. Yes. 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 All right. Let's, Let's go, do guys. this. <laughs> Welcome. To your new lobby. All right. Oh, awesome. Yeah. No way, it's awesome. Exactly oh, how it should be. Oh, this wow. is cool. Yeah. When I first walked in, I was disappointed. It was just like a big anticlimax. Now you have a nice, warm, oh, modern feel the minute you walk in. But your guests will arrive and feel welcomed. Yeah. Take a seat. Oh. Is it beautiful? Yes. Amazing. Beautiful. Amazing. Brian, what do you think? Beautiful, absolutely beautiful, welcoming. Awesome. The colors, oh the contrast, the warmth. Oh, perfect. What Gordon has done with the lobby is beautiful. Now that blue, it's so warm, it's so welcoming, it's awesome. This is a historic hotel. Your ex-president stayed here. Yes. That doesn't happen that often in hotels. Thank you, you very much. Good. Yeah. I'm glad you're yeah. here. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Gordon. Thank you, Gordon. Hold on. Thank you. There's more. Well, there's more. more. From 6 o'clock this morning, you're now live with online bookings. Yeah. <laughs> You don't go anywhere near the bar, you know what time they're coming, and you are now in the 21st century. Yeah. Are you ready to see the presidential suite? Yeah? Yeah. All right, President. Come and see my room. Let's go. All right. I think you'll love it. Let's go. Jump in. Oh, my gosh. Now. Wow. It is awesome. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's awesome. Yes. President. Yes. This one's been freshened up. This one's been spruced up. You need that vibrance. The minute you walk into a room, you want to feel, wow, I'm stepping into history, but I also want some comfort. Yeah. This is fit for a president. Our president now could stay here. Obama <laughs> would be, be OK to stay here now. <laughs> it still feels historic, but it's a bedroom, not a museum. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, 
Make sure that when your guests are checked in, their bedrooms are off the tour. Yeah. Did you put a new okay. robes? Is there something on here to make it softer? No, it's all been lined and cushioned. Okay. And oh, oh my it's gosh. It's yeah. For me, the big problem wasn't the linens, it was the noise. We've come up with yes. a solution to narrow that yeah. down. Last call, Good. midnight. Mm -hmm. Well, stick to those times of your bar closing because the damage you can do to your reputation is devastating. Yep. We're going to follow through and make sure that our customers in the hotel are as happy as our customers in the bar and our customers in the restaurant. Right, you ready to see the rooms outside that you told me were modern, right? Yeah. Yeah. Let me show you what modern is. You ready? Yeah. Love this one. Oh, oh my gosh, oh my I love God. this one. Oh, God. No way. Oh. Look at the color. Oh, look at this. You can see why I got upset. The owner's done nothing in nine months. We've done all this in fucking 24 hours. Yeah. I'm blown away. I can't believe the, the creativity that's been put into this place in the last few days. John, what do you think? Very, um, lost words, inspired, you know, very inspiring, you know. Listen, you should never, ever, ever be afraid of change. You've got yeah. to keep on going. No, yeah, I got it. Every time. Brian, what do you think? What's going through your mind? I've never heard you so quiet. Breathtaking, though. I don't Breath even know what to say because it's beautiful. It's Isn't it something? Beautiful. This, this is perfect. With this kick in the ass, we're going to go forward, full throttle, going to make changes that no one's ever seen before. You ready to see the dining room? Yes. yes. yes this one I love. Yes. The dining room is awesome. Yes. Awesome. Where, where do you stop, buddy? <laughs> Look at the colors. Come oh in. Oh, my God. Beautiful. Where's the pink? Oh, my God. Yeah. John, are those horrendous pink walls. A stunning, beautiful color on the walls that just pop. And there's one more thing. This bit you're going to love. It's a surprise that's going to completely change your business. You ready for this? Yes. 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 I've just revealed the stunning new improvements to the historic Murphy's Hotel. Oh Our president now could stay here. And now there's one more addition that will ensure this hotel thrives in the future. You are in the heart of some of the most sought after wineries anywhere in the world. And there's a massive market that you have been missing out on. And here's why. Every famous winery has a lovely tasting room on this main street. At five o'clock, they close. Here, you're now gonna pick up that business. This is a menu designed to pair with great local wines. Oh, wow, look at this. Okay. Oh, my goodness. This is incredible. Oh, my gosh. Start off with that lovely cheese plate. The chicken liver crostini, paired with a stunning chilled rosé. And then this wonderful local Local ricotta dip. You now have a perfect menu. When those tasting rooms close at five o'clock, you pick it up and you continue it. And where are they going to stay the night? Yeah. That's right, after dinner. And I want you to dig in um, and sample. The wine tasting menu is awesome. The overall experience to any guest that walks through our door now, I believe, is going to be better than ever. I like the pairing of the bruschetta and the, the wine that it goes with. It's a very nice, fresh dish. There's no going back. No. So you're only going up now. No. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, this is so phenomenal. This is going to put us on the map, off the charts, reservations, off the hook. Thank you, Chef. Thank, Thank you. you. As well as a wine pairing menu, I've changed the entire menu in the dining room. Let me show you one of my favorite dishes. I'm very excited about the new menu. I know where I'm eating every night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Fresh baked lemon meringue pie. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at that thing. And the real inspiration behind this was Brian's hair. <laughs> this new menu is going to touch a business, a clientele that we've never had at the Murphy's Hotel. And I know personally, I can't wait to eat there more often. With warm and fresh rooms and the new wine tasting menu, my only concern is whether Brian can stay focused on the guest experience. Uh, listen, every night from now on in, in this hotel is a big night, let me tell you. Uh, and it's not just about the bar, it's about the restaurant and the rooms. Push those tasting menus. In that bar. GM, are you ready? We're ready. Um, if there's one thing you do not need as a general manager is an apron, get that off. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Are you ready? Right, we're yeah. ready. Yeah. Yes. Let's go, guys. Let's go. Come on, guys. Let's go. Come on. How are you doing? Good, how are you? With extended front desk operating hours, guests can easily check in and feel welcome in the new lobby. Wow. Looks nice. I'll bet it'll be a comfortable sleep I tonight. know, it's going to be fun. And they're enjoying the renovated and peaceful rooms. I wish this was my bedroom. <laughs> this is the uh, new Samarlo. And the wine tasting menu is a hit. That filet looks lovely. Oh, thank Guys, they're loving the food. Keep it going, thank yes? You, thank you. Well done. And good luck. When I first arrived, you saw three young guys sort of playing at running a bar. 
and completely forgetting that they were actually in charge of a hotel. But Brian stepped up and has taken that general manager role, which is great news. I'm hoping now that they get that party mode out of their mind and focus on the potential of what this business can bring them. Uh, great job. Um, you performed like owners tonight. You sound like owners, and this place, you know, is rocking. The atmosphere in the bar is controlled. Is. The dining room's having fun, the patio's full, the wine tasting menu is flying out. Keep up the good work. Okay, Gordon, he really has opened my eyes and showed me that we need to take more of a leadership role as an owner. I'm taking you out of the employee of the month. I know. Choose one together. Yes, we yeah. will. On a monthly basis, have your input. Yeah. Throw it into the pot. I believe Gordon has saved his place by putting wind in our sails again. We truly did need a kick in the ass because we were playing around a little too much. General Manager, remember, actions speak I louder hey, than words. Your next day, you'll hear great things, I guarantee. Gordon is amazing. He's a magician, and I think that he came through and he transformed the hotel into this wonderful masterpiece, and I'm so thankful that he came through and helped us. What a gorgeous place. Damn. I never did get to see Kevin lap dance. <laughs>。visit to the historic Murphy's Hotel, the owners have finally become owners. Joel is keeping the kitchen and the walk-in extra clean, and he has new pride in his work. I got a well done going right there. You can go peek at the upstairs bathrooms. One's down the hall, showers, both restrooms upstairs. You, you, st it. you stay there. I'm, I'm good right here. Okay. Brian is stepping up as general manager, focusing his efforts on the hotel. Brian is definitely capable of being the general manager. Gordon has completely changed everything. <laughs> Gordon brought the historic hotel back to life. I traveled to Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, a small, beautiful town outside of Washington, D.C. That is where I met Karen Townsend. Good morning, welcome. Nice to see I'm you. Karen Townsend. Karen, good to see you. A woman who has a wacky way of running a hotel, which is also her home. Let me tell you, I never expected to see the things I saw. Oh, shit. Wow, but dusty. Do you sell these? We do. A convenience store, complete with hideous dolls in the dining room. What is that? Oh, these are my famous baskets. There were baskets everywhere, including ones with bugs in them that were even up for sale. Yep, oh. that's private. I found her clothes locked up in a wardrobe in my room. It's like garments from the Civil War. The thing with Karen is, the person she trusts the most spends her time painting murals over destroyed walls and disturbing customers, and she's not even an employee. Didn't you have purple glasses earlier? Leave them alone. OK. What is she doing to your hotel? It doesn't then... go outside. I mean, it's not a hole to the outside. You can't just Band-Aid this place. Karen was so confused to why any of this was a problem including the food. That's a disaster. Disaster trout. Which was dreadful. It looks like a soup. It was in the fridge, and then they microwaved it. From the fridge to the microwave. Everything was frozen. You're just hoarding stuff, Karen. This is how much we need. We keep running out of stuff. And the kitchen was a disaster area. Are these TV screens? What are those? Microwaves. Oh, my God. Everywhere I turn, there's just junk everywhere. No organization whatsoever. You're boiling a burger. Why aren't you cooking it from fresh? We make them ahead of time. After learning the burgers were boiled, I honestly thought it couldn't get any worse. That's the rotisserie chicken. You get it from the freezer. Disgusting. But then I saw the frozen store-bought chicken that was being microwaved. That is the worst thing I've seen so far. I'm done. And I had to stop the madness. I'm so sorry, but you, as customers, deserve better. You're not going to act responsible for it. I will. We're shutting it down. As my journey continues at the Towns Inn, the staff has finally had enough. Gordon, this is the worst restaurant I ever worked in in my life. I need Karen to start opening her eyes because my time is running out to help her. You don't even think there's a problem. That's what worries me. The practices are so bad. I'm just so fucking up. You have to take responsibility. I'll do what I can do. Look at this shit. Look at this. <laughs> You've got to tell me that this is a good chicken. I've eaten it, like I said, yeah. This is crazy. You can't not go to the store and buy stuff and resell it. Can I? Aren't you aware of what you're doing? Do you actually care? Yes, You I do, do care. Which part of this hotel do you care? 
every part. This is how delusional you are, that this is a good chicken. What's in this one here? Stuff that we pre-cook, yes, yes. What's that? Eggplant. So everything's just reheated in the microwave? Yes. Yes. We're in danger of being shut down by the health authorities. I'm sorry, folks. Basically, I take responsibility. I'm sorry. I'm very ashamed and... I am fed up from not being heard. It doesn't matter what I say. Karen is going to do what she want to do. What's going on? Court, I'm just, I don't have no help, man. I told her she won't listen. Perform like this. I can't. I, I can only. I can't. You can't. I you can't. Just, it's, it's, you're gonna get fucking arrested. I, I won't get arrested. Put in jail for killing some damn body. I, Gordon, this is the worst restaurant I ever worked in in my life. Practices are the problem. Right. The sort of, the way that everyone's walking around in denial. They are, but I'm there's not. No, but there's no standards though. You're not maintaining a level that they yeah. deserve. Yeah, I know that. I know that, Sheldon. So why have you become like a zombie and following her motions? I'm not. I was, I'm trying to fix it. Have you it. given up? No, I have not given up. I have not given up. You're just as bad as she is if you don't put your foot down and say no. I tell her no, 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 and she keeps on doing it. Someone and needs to draw a line. I have drawn a line. It doesn't matter. I can only do so much for it. This is not my place. Uh, my apologies, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so sorry. Sorry. What a joke. Have you seen any of this stuff going on here? Do you have any idea what's going on? What's this? Pre-cooked bacon. Pre-cooked from when? It's dated. They, they do but it every day, just about. Right? No, they don't. When was that cooked? That's not today. If they did, honestly, let's see what it says. 10.31. We're in November the 6th now. This is insane. Look at that in there. Don't you drain that, or it just sits there in its blood? And in here? That's a freezer. Bloody hell. What is that? What's that noise? That's the fan. What a nightmare. <sighs> And Karen, you've got no idea that this is going on like this? What is that in there? That's... Dishwater. No, that's french fries in there. Fries? Why is the water so dirty? Nobody didn't change it. Sorry? Nobody didn't change it, sir. But you're cooking fries from there tonight, in that water. I saw them fill up the fryer twice. It sucks. Where'd you get the ham from? She bought it at the store. Holy crap. It's a spiral cut. They cut it and put it in here. And then uh, use it for side of ham for breakfast. When was the last time this was clean? Uh, last year when I cleaned this, Chef. Last year when we cleaned the oven. We're in November. Last year. Yes, sir. I asked Karen, I said, Karen, we need to shut down so we, 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 gotta, we gotta do maintenance. Look at the mess. Why have you let it go like this? I didn't know that they were doing things that were not Karen, that proper. You... No, but let, listen to me, Jeff. This is the bullshit, the guy, okay? Let's tell him the truth here, okay? I asked for some new equipment. I can't get no new equipment. Why not? I've been here for four years. I've been asking for new equipment. I can't work with this shit here. Look. Look at that. I'm fucking pissed. I've been asking for this. I asked for new equipment. How long do you think this shit's going to last? It ain't going to last forever. I'm just so fucking fed up with every damn thing. I can't get no help. Me and Jill pulled you out of this. And now I asked for some help with some equipment. You can't spend on it, but... But right. this is working. You 
And that's Auction? working. Look at this shit. Look at this. Part of the damn line. I'm just so fucking fed up with every damn thing. Look at this shit. Look at this. Part of the damn line. You can't expect to work in this. Are you greedy with the money? I'm in debt. I'm barely breaking even. Let's get real. They're at their wits' end. They're done. They're finished and they're a spent force. I've been cooking for 20 years, and I never had this problem. We have to step up. I mean, look at the kitchen. It's atrocious. Look at this here. Would you work in this? I do. <laughs> um, it's so funny with you. No, it's not funny. I do but I laugh. I... Look at the mess. Can't do no. it all. You own this place. But I delegated the restaurant to them. But and Karen, then... the bottom line is you have no idea how to yeah. run a restaurant, and all you're doing now is blaming the staff you put no, in no, there. No, no, I'm just... No, but they're taking yeah. the heat, yeah. and I, your I... problems aren't their problems, but they become yeah. their problems, because look at the mess. Well... You yes, don't even yes. think there's a problem. That's there what worries me. Practices are so bad. That's what I try to say. Why has it got this bad? You have to take responsibility. You're ignorant, oblivious, and delusional. I'll do what I can do. It's not good enough. I'm going to my room. I've seen enough shit for one night. Oh, man. Fuck it out. Thank God somebody else sees it other than us. This is what we deal with on every day. It's nothing different. I lost different. my damn hat. It's in there. I'll find it. I know where you threw it. You know, we could have done this without Ramsey. I mean, no. anybody can. No, not with the, not yeah. with the. I don't have, I, what do I spend on myself? Now, I'm doing the best I can. I borrowed money and went out and bought more refrigerators. Then, oh, we need freezers. I know I care, I know I, uh, why, So don't. Why didn't we just tone down the menu? The menu is what you all do. You could have told me that these are the things we I need to do and this you. is why. It, I will tell you, Jeff, I have no stake in that menu. I thought that's what you and Jill wanted. No, that's not well, it. I wanted to tone down. To disagree me, then. And Jeff, you get your way. You work hard. I agree. No, I'm just saying. But over the year, you have averaged 44 hours a week. No, that's, I'm not, I'm and you're paid for a manager. No, no, I'm that's just not saying. That many hours. No, Karen, no, I'm not even talking about that. Jeff. Yeah, but that, that's. I'm listening, Jeff. You're not hearing me, Karen. What a mess. I mean, one of the worst states of a kitchen hotel in I've ever seen in my entire career. Also, a owner that is delusional, and she's convinced herself that the place is run properly, and, you know, I'm really uneasy about just being in here. The smell is appalling. Everything feels dirty and just... And I'm not convinced that even the bathrooms are that clean. Let me run a quick test. Quick bacteria test. There's a communal bathroom that I am uncertain about. When this thing reads 30, it indicates that it's a sort of um, a, a decent level of hygiene. Basically, it's clean. Anything over 30, then it gets into the danger zone. <sighs> this is where the smell is really bad in here. There's crap everywhere. It's just so unhygienic. And, uh, I just want to. Doesn't feel clean. To get a good reading, rub the swap underneath the mat. The smell under here is appalling. In these crevices, there's dirt. That is gross. That is gross. That is disgusting. Snap it, let the liquid go down. Let a shake. In. Holy crap. No, no. I'm unconvinced that this place is clean. Everything smells. It's very difficult for you to identify the smell, but in here, it really stinks. So, just. It's just a smell from here, stains everywhere. And what scares me is the fact that the kitchen took a year to get cleaned. God knows.
guys but this tub so pretty gross now pop that in there I'm not sure where this place was cleaned properly in oh my god Karen is Karen in here Karen just come upstairs please two seconds please let's go quick Come in. I've just done a swab test with the carpet. I told her the smell is gross. Anything above 30, you're in the danger zone for unhygienic practices, and it's not fit for customers. What do you think the reading is? 100. 100. 50. 50. 60. 70. 70. 803. 803. Oops. 803. Oops. Burn it. That's not an oops. That's a oh no. 803. <laughs> wow. This is just the carpet. You can't be that bad. We get a lot of bikers, bicyclists, Karen, and hikers. You're paying $130 to get out of bed and step on a disgusting, stinking carpet. It smells like there's crap all over the floor. Probably because there's crap on the floor. Probably, could be. What does that mean, could be? My first shift here, you were in the bathroom and I think you had an accident on the floor, on the mat. What? Oh my God. I mean, yeah. There have been times when I have had diarrhea, but it doesn't happen very often. But, um, no, I, I didn't realize that there was that problem. All day, both of you have been in denial. Not one of you told me about the problems. Not one of you have taken any form of responsibility. You're happy to serve that food to me lunchtime. You're happy to mosey around and piss around on the walls and paint silly pictures. This is a travesty. This is shocking. Your staff knows it, but you two are oblivious. But the rest of the room is dusted and clean. It, it's, what? It's not, he's, not focus, he's not talking about the room, it's not about the rug, it's not about the food, it's about the whole picture. Look at the mm -hmm. cage, you're yelling. Am I not allowed to yell, Sarah? Because someone has to, because you're not. He's trying here to help us. Stop being in denial. It's not about the rug and this perfectly dusted thing that this is not gonna make a difference. The whole picture, the whole thing. What are you scared of, Karen, admitting? Well, I'm working 16 hours but, a day yeah, and spending every time in money. That. These are rooms, too, that I get positive yes. feedback about. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm serious. A lot of positive... There you go again. No, you can't be that... D no. No, I, no, I, I, I want to fix things. I am not sleeping in this dump. I'm done. I'm out of here. Oh, man. You can't leave. I'm not staying in here. Ramsey. Don't go. Karen, this is a travesty that you're paying $130 to get out of bed and step on a disgusting, stinking carpet. You're in the danger zone for unhygienic practices, and it's not fit for customers. We get a lot of bikers, bicyclists Karen, and hikers. What are you scared of, Karen, admitting well, I'm working 16 hours but, a day yeah, and but that's spending your excuse. every time you fall back on that. These are rooms, too, that I get positive yes. feedback about. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm serious. A lot of positive... There you go again. No, you can't be that... No. No, I, no, I, I, I want to fix things. I am not sleeping in this dump. I'm done. I'm out of here. Oh, man. You can't leave. Ramsey. Don't go. I'm not staying in here. Is this your office in here? That's my living quarters in my office. Your yeah. what? I live there. You live in here? Yeah. What? Let me show you. What? I saw the office sign on the door, but you live in here? Right here. This is my bed. I just uh, sleep here. Are you kidding me? Every night you sleep in here? Yes. 
Is there a mattress there? No, it's just quilts, cover on them, sheets. You sleep on a board? Mm-hmm. In the winter, I could go upstairs, but I choose not to. I choose to stay here. I wish bathroom to use and shower. And I use the ones upstairs. Mm-hmm. What's the room next door? Oh, that's the beverage area. And then beyond that's the kitchen. The beverage area? Mm -hmm. The keg is right on the kegerator is right on the other side there. And then that's the beverage that's cooler the... right oh there. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So I, I sort of sleep in the kitchen. This is crazy. I love it here. There's no place in the world I would rather be. You're not doing one thing right. You have lost it completely. And you've convinced yourself, in amongst the chaotic mess that you live in, that it's all right. It's not. It's absurd. This is no way for a lady to sleep and live and eat. You shouldn't be living in a kitchen. There's not even a fan or an air-conditioned room. And it's true. a tiny cubby hole yeah. cluttered with your junk. Are you OK? I think so. I mean... This is not normal. Well, what's normal? In... What's normal? Seriously. I can't even start to think about helping you when you're in such denial. Mm. What the f The next morning, I woke up not wanting to give up on the town's inn seeing how bad the kitchen was and learning that it wasn't clean for over a year. I hired a professional cleaning crew to not only declutter, but to scrub down the kitchen as well. Crap everywhere. Uh, morning. I don't know about being good. Um, well, it could be better, could be worse. Yes. So were you, were you sleeping? Uh, I was, I've got a headache. I don't You've know why. Again, <laughs> I've had a headache since I've arrived. Uh, I'm still unconvinced where I'm going with you and this business. However, I want you to do something. All right. Something that you haven't done properly in a long time. And take that. Yes. And start packing. Ah. Uh. Where I'm am not, I going to go? I'm not messing around. I haven't got time to mess around. OK, but where? Don't worry about that. I just want you to start packing All up. All right. Quickly. I've got enough boxes. Oof. I'm moving fast. You know how fast. important this is, yeah? I do. No, I'm... Time is of the essence. I need you to start packing. And I'm... I'm sorry. Start packing quickly. I'm worried about Karen not listening to me, and I don't think she realises just how bad the business really is. I reached out to her son, Jason, the majority owner of the inn, who has the most to lose if Karen fails to turn it around. Jason, how are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Yourself? Yeah, very well, thank you. Jason Townsend, yeah, nice to meet you. Can I take a seat? Uh, first of all, what a beautiful place. Yeah, I mean, it really is. Gorgeous. Yeah. I've fallen in love with this area uh, beyond belief. Um, unfortunately, I haven't fallen in love with the inn. I'm shocked at the setup and what's happening to your mum currently. Yeah. Do you have any idea how bad it is? I think I have a sense, but obviously I'm not here on a daily, regular basis, so yep. don't appreciate the in and outs of it. She's in denial. I'm trying to explain things to her uh, in a very calm way, and she's just refusing point blank to understand the logic. I think her, her vision has been both her blessing and her curse in the sense of it's what's allowed her to drive through this and persevere, but it's also what puts her in denial. Have you seen where she sleeps? Yeah. Does that make you feel happy? Not at all, not at all. I mean, we bought this with two main motivations, to let her develop this in business, but also have it as grandma's house, and it's not. We went into this looking at it as, as obviously we want it to be some type of investment, but we didn't have a particular game plan beyond just rent out the space to mom, and we want to see it do well, not just 
to make money, but so that she really can have a life here. And it's just been triage since day one. That's no way to live. No. Does this become a burden on your family now? Or yes, it has. It's because we're concerned for, for her. Uh, it, it, it's a financial burden. This lady wasn't your mother, and she was renting from your property. You'd be a lot more severe in the way that place has been handled. We all bought this in part with, uh, with our hearts and not just our heads. And it's, it's that balance between wanting to respect her desires to, to, to make this business what she wants it to be, but also realize that if it's not going to be a, a profitable business and if there's going to be a cost, not just financially, but physically and emotionally, we need to, we need to shut it down. Now, this is your mum. You know, this is not a cousin or a niece or a nephew. This is your mum. So um, she needs to hear that. It's affecting you personally, financially. It could drag your family down. You're not her safety net. Yeah. I need you to have a word with her and how we're not prepared to move forward unless she's going to commit to change. I'm talking long-term change. Mm -hmm. She needs help, yeah. and she needs help urgently. I think I overloaded this one. After spending time this morning with Karen's son, we both agree, in order for the business to succeed, he needs to confront his mum that a major change needs to happen. Well, Karen, um, first of all, um, I spent this morning catching up with Jason. Oh, OK, good. And just trying to get him up to speed with what I've been discovering. Mm -hmm. You know I'm not happy. And I think deep down inside that you can't be happy in this current existence. So I want you to listen to Jason. As you know, we've been talking a lot about what's going on here, why we're here, mm -hmm. what we want with the business. Mm -hmm. You're my mom, but you're also my, my tenant. And so I have two main goals and objectives with this place. And uh, one is, is a financial one mm -hmm. uh, for your sake, for my sake, for our family's sake. And then my second objective is to um, encourage and support you and your life. You're not just an innkeeper, you're my mom, you're, you're a grandma. And for us to enjoy all those things, we have to, I think, make some changes here. It's not sustainable financially, emotionally, and, and, and physically. I just don't see the business in such a negative light as you do. I, I look out my but window. you realize most people I, do, yeah. I, I look out my window, and there's the Potomac River and the train station. You can't see out the window, my darling. Oh, I can't. Above it. Okay. But even even the bags of clothes yesterday, and mm -hmm. now the boxes of clutter. People don't live like this. You, you, you have to get out of there, and you have to start living your life completely different to what you've been doing. I'm not here for three months, Karen. I'm here for a short time mm -hmm. to give you everything I've got to get this place fixed. And if you can't listen to Jason, and you're not prepared to listen to me. I'm not asking you any longer. We're all working for the same goal here. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening. I, I, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, it needs to stop. For your sake, for my sake, for our family's sake, I can't keep renting the house out to you if we can't get a business that is consistently profitable. The place is in jeopardy, and there's not one element functioning properly. And your business is going to take Jason's family down if you don't sort this out. Um, I don't want to burden my children at all. So that, that is something that is high priority for me. But you have to come to terms with yourself that it's broken, it's wrong, and you have to change. I, and I'm willing. Whatever you propose, I'll try. Otherwise, it's game over. Let's move forward. I'm agreeing to help. I'm going to put a plan in place, but uh, you, you can't continue the way you're doing it. You know that. Thank you, Jason. Thank you for it. Thank you. Do you know what his plan is? I have no idea. After Karen packed up her belongings, I had my team start the renovation process while I found a place close by for Karen to move into. Hi, Karen. Are you well? I'm very well, thank you. Good. Let's step mm -hmm. inside. Something I'd like to uh, All right. show you. Come in, please. What a lovely place. 
Do you like it? I do. What do you like about it? Um, well, it's not cluttered. <laughs> it's not cluttered, is it? <laughs> yes, I like that. When I saw where you've been living for the last 12 months, mm -hmm. I was appalled. You shouldn't be going to bed on a piece of wood. I know. You shouldn't be doing that. If we're going to make a change, then you have to step back. I and I mean step back from the business. Mm -hmm. And that means giving yourself some space. So I've done something, mm -hmm. and I'm paying for it out of my own pocket, and I've rented this space for you for the next couple of months. Okay. Two months. Two months, OK. Two That's months. great. Give yourself a break. You can relax. Watch a bit of TV. I haven't had a television since 1993. So this is really a big change, yeah. So since 1993. Well, even if you're not going to watch TV, mm -hmm. read. Oh, relax. I can do. And just mm -hmm. take in the view. Mm -hmm. And if you decide to move back in there and you convert one of the rooms and it's got an ensuite bathroom, that's all fair and well. But then you need to separate the difference, mm -hmm. not in a box. I like this. I feel comfortable here. Uh, have a look upstairs. There's a, a beautiful bedroom there okay. and a full size bed. All right. <laughs> There's a ensuite bathroom and I see. a wardrobe to yes, yourself. Big bathroom. Very nice. I could go to sleep right now. Wake me up in two hours. We've got work to do. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> that, that was comfortable. Um, Karen, you need to you need to start thinking about being a boss, being an owner. With that comes certain responsibilities. What was it like for you to be an owner? What, what's the important? Well, the important thing was serving the guest and trying to nurture a good relationship with my employees. Right, that means setting an example, yes? Yes. And being the face of the inn. Yes. Right. What do you think is the most important? thing about being the face of a business. Having a presence. Yes. Standing out like an owner. Okay. You need to walk this historic town looking like an innkeeper, polished. Okay. Now, I feel bad about asking a lady to glamorize herself, <laughs> so I'm not trying to be detrimental. It's just okay. I'm going to send you off for a makeover. Okay. When was the last time you went and had a facial, got your hair done, and bought a new dress with a, a bright colour. I don't think I've done that since I was 13 years old. When was the last time you went for a blow dry? Never. I mean, I, I have a blow dryer, but I, I never go to a salon. Right. Mm -mm. When was the last time you had your nails done? Never. Mm -mm. Never? Correct. And that was never a priority for me, oh, but you're... you're but Teaching we're going to make it. Yeah, we're okay. going to make it a priority mm -hmm. because it's about you. Mm -hmm. It's a business. You have to front it, and that mm -hmm. that comes with an image. Yeah. <laughs> I'm glad you're up for a change. I want you to feel better. I want you to enjoy your life. I want you to appreciate what your team can do for you, and hopefully just break the mold a little bit. 100. percent You happy with this? I'm ready to enjoy Good. it. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. So much. I, I have a security deposit here, so it's a rental. Okay. No murals. All right, yeah. we'll leave it the way we found it. Thank you. See you shortly. All the best to you. Yeah. Do you want me to turn on the TV for you or not? Uh, not yet. <laughs> I'm going to take this one step at a time. YouTube? Um, I've seen a few things on YouTube, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. Instagram? Never. But my granddaughter is teaching me. Selfie? Taking a picture of myself? Oh, never. Uh-uh. Tinder? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> Welcome to the dark ages. Enjoy. <laughs> This was one of the toughest makeovers my team has ever taken on. We had not only moved Karen out of the town's inn, but packed up all her clutter before transforming the space. Good morning. How are you feeling? Excited. 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 The sun is shining, and there seems to be a new, bright breath of fresh air on the town's inn. We're missing somebody. Karen. We are. She's been busy over the last 24 hours. I'm hoping you notice a change. Oh, my God. Oh, 
I don't even dress like this to go to church, do I? <laughs> now, somebody's looking That's like an good. owner of an inn. Yes. yes. You look amazing. For someone with an Amish Mennonite lifestyle, well, yeah, I look radically different. <laughs> you look amazing. You look so different. Karen, you look good. Yeah. Really good. Are you ready to go inside? I've been dreaming of this moment. Right. So, yeah. um, follow me. Let's go. Come on, all of you. <gasps> oh. What's missing? My bed. Karen's bed. <laughs> Isn't this what a inn should look like? Yes. A tiny little convenience store that is bright and modern and everything is on view. And even if you're not staying in the inn, guests will come in and buy stuff. You can sell stuff properly. It's a proper little boutique. I'm overwhelmed. I'm... It looks amazing. Amazing. Wow. What Gordon has done is Phenomenal. The store here looks great. It's like walking into a whole nother place. Please. All right. Whoa. God is the dust. Well oh my done. goodness. Yes. Well done. Look at that. Beautiful design. Beautiful. When I walked in this dining room, first off, it was dreary yes. and laden with junk. And now we have a proper dining room. Yes. Oh, lovely. Look at that. All day menu. Well, the menu hangs on the wall. It's written daily according to what you've got available, Jeff. Yes. And when we run out, we run out. We tear it off and we start again. If you turn around, you'll see the custom artwork on the wall. Please do not paint over that. I will not. I will promise, <laughs> promise you. Me. No problem. I is, love it. That's the only mural we need on the wall. Just that. <laughs> enough is enough. Yeah. Right, you ready to see upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Oh. As you come up, have a little look at the hallway first, please. Oh, wow. Gone to the baskets. Anyone wants to do a little bit of work, a little bit of writing, can sit here. Absolutely beautiful. Wow. Jump in. Everything's going to Jump in. Oh, my, oh my God. God. Is this the look. Oh. room? That's right. Oh, my God. What a vision. I can't believe it's the same oh, wow. room. New sheets, new bedding, and a new carpet. It's beautiful. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, my God. No more murals on the wall. We have a nice, stunning wall. I love it. No more Brillo pads in the wall. They've gone. <laughs> yes. I love it. And you have your very own wardrobe. <laughs> no padlock on it. <laughs> How nice is that? Yes, you can use a wardrobe. It is exquisite. My family thinks I'm so set in my ways that I'm not going to like any of these changes and I'm going to go right back to the old way. I know that's what they're thinking. And they couldn't be further from the truth. My team has spent the last two days cleaning out the kitchen by getting rid of the microwaves, refrigerators and freezers. I've created a much smaller menu that is manageable for the kitchen staff to execute. Please, take your menu and pass them on. Oh, wow. oh I love it. <laughs> now, what do you think? Couldn't be more beautiful and appealing. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, let's be real. The kitchen is tiny. So, a small dynamic menu. As the seasons change, we go through to spring, and some of them will increase on a daily special, only according to what business is about. That makes okay? sense. And so we're not buying unnecessary, and we're not adding 10 more appetizers and entrees on there just because we want to look busy. No. Keep it plain and simple. Keep it plain, delicious, and simple. Let's go through the dishes. A high street burger. No water. <laughs> uh, no water. No. Uh, beautiful pate, wonderfully seasoned. <laughs> a griddle in there to sear and cook them to order. Chicken pot pie. Little modern twist on a salad niçoise, but we've done it with salmon. Yeah. Homemade granola. Seasonal berries. Cheap and easy to put out that tiny kitchen. And then, of course, the mac and cheese. It does not go in the microwave. What's that? I don't exactly know what that. What's that? The sports bar of microwaves has gone. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, visually, what do you think? It's yeah. beautiful. Simple oh, my and God. fast. And it takes a big load off in the kitchen. Yes. And we're not buying frozen. It's all fresh. Right, knife and fork yes. and have a little taste. Oh, man. Mm, that is good. Oh, my. That's like mama's macaroni and cheese. People will drive from Washington, D.C. to come oh, here oh, and eat this way. So good. Tonight, the town's inn relaunches the inn and the restaurant. Right, how are we feeling? Good. Are we ready? Awesome. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Tough week, but it's been instrumental. Let's put this place back on the map. 
OK? Push the freshness of the menu. I don't want anyone panicking. There's nothing we can't do on the menu. Any issues, we talk about it. If we talk to each other, we prevent mistakes happening. If we shut down, things will happen without us knowing. Wow. Karen, anything you'd like to say to the team? Thank you, and I'm looking forward to moving forward. Here you go. Oh, that's yeah. great. Good luck. Let's go, guys. Thank you. Let me help you down the stairs. Thank Good you. to see you. Welcome to the town's end. Look at that dude checking in, it looks like. Immediately, the guests see the changes in the dining room and the rooms. Yeah, it's beautiful, nice. yeah. Wow, look at this. Yes. Very nice. I love this bed. This is pretty nice. Oh, look at this. You got a nice armoire. And throw our stuff in here. How do you like the changes? Looks good. This is great. I can definitely say this is way better than <laughs> better. what I had last year. This is definitely an improvement, yes. <laughs> Here's to the new restaurant town. Indeed. That's a burger with french fries, BLT, and a mac and cheese. Great. The kitchen is functioning more efficiently with a smaller menu and is preparing the dishes cooked to order. And Karen is overseeing the inn as an owner and successfully treating this place like a business for the first time. How's everything so far? I heard you like this food. Order in, please. Yeah, I got okay. five minutes on the burger, chef. And we got two orders of fries. Fine, nice and crispy, the fries, and seasoned beautifully, yes? Yes, sir, chef. Well done. That is outstanding. So now we have a place to come in the wintertime. Good, so you can come back. Yeah, we're That's locals. Great. What does it mean, a small little local bistro to the town? How good is that for you? Actually, it's huge. Uh, we need more local bistros like this. We're really great. excited to have it. <laughs> good to see you. Good Take care, good night. Thank you, guys. Good, 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 good night. Thank you. Take care. Good night. Happy customers. Wow. I'm off. Thank you, man. You're welcome. Don't lose that passion. I'm off. Yeah? Continue enhancing this kitchen and stick together. Yes. Yeah, you're strong together, you two. We yeah? Will. Okay. Thank yeah, go on. I love you. <laughs> yeah. Take care. We all love you. Right. <laughs> See you soon. Look after each other. Aww. We will. Okay. Tonight proved that this place can work. The potential is incredible. The locals are dying to see this place at the forefront of this amazing town. The area is historic. Make sure your inn follows down that line. Karen, I know change is going to be hard. I know you're going to resist, but you cannot afford to go back. You've got to go forward. So I know how much this means to you, and I know what kind of jeopardy is at stake if it doesn't work. So think of the consequences. It's not just you, mm -hmm. it's your son, your son's mm -hmm. family, and the legacy that you want to continue mm -hmm. with. So I'm leaving you all the tools. Push forward. Mm -hmm. Promise right. me you're not going to go back to your old ways. No, no, this is more fun and more effective. And right. I just have seen the positive response from everybody. You, you did the, the, the groundwork here. Thank you. So thank you. You have an amazing inn. Yeah. OK. Uh, amazing location, beautiful village. Do not village. move those clothes back in from Lamont's basement. Uh -huh. Get rid of this stuff, let it fly off the shelves, mm -hmm. and what start getting mm -hmm. this place back on the map mm -hmm. and enjoy that lovely little cottage. Take time out and spend time with the grandkids and mm -hmm. just let the business breathe. Yeah. Promise me. Yes. Promise. I promise. Yes. Thank mm -hmm. you. All right. <laughs> Gordon's visit has been extremely educational. This is good. This is right. This is what it should be. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> I want the end to be successful, and I think it will be now. Take care now. Thanks, Karen. Good night. Wow. That's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, come back. <laughs> come back. Ah, oh, I don't He's want gone. to see him go. <laughs> Since my visit, Karen has continued to lease the house I had previously rented for her and has been listening to her staff to make positive changes. That is awesome. And her son Jason has gotten involved with the business to help Karen meet their goals and both are happy to report business is heading in the right direction.